you don't accept Jesus as your Savior, you're going to spend eternity lost in hell, in the lake of fire forever. Thank you for your support of Honest News Network. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, there's no important, more important message for us to pray that your people would fully understand and that even a sinner would understand, Lord. And that is to understand that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. Father, we pray that this lesson will help to cause your people to become more deeply rooted in the very foundation of their salvation, Lord. In this time when winds of doctrine are blowing, a storm is raging, I pray, Lord, that they will understand just how serious, Lord, the matter is, that they would understand the foundation of their salvation, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's time to worship, brothers and sisters. Prepare our hearts. Amen for the word of God that the Lord has for us today. Savior say, thy strength indeed is small, child of weakness watch and pray, find in me thine all and all, Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe, sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Lord, Lord, now indeed I find Thy power in Thine alone Can change the leper spots And melt a heart of stone. Jesus paid it all all to him I owe Sin had left a crimson stain He washed it white as snow For nothing good have I Whereby thy grace to claim I'll wash my garments white in the blood of Calvary's Lamb Jesus paid it all All to Him I owe Sin had left a crimson stain He washed it white as snow And when before the throne I stand in Him complete Jesus died my soul to save My lips shall still repeat Jesus paid it all All to Him I owe Sin had left a crimson stain blood washed it's whiter than snow it's whiter than snow folks amen whiter than snow the songwriter says white as snow but how many know this even the snow gets dirty 
Amen. Even gets dirty uh, as it's as it's coming down in the atmosphere. It gets dirty. Are you listening? I believe the greater understanding is is blood washes whiter than snow. Aren't you glad that Jesus is able to remove every every guilty stain? He's he's able to wash us, cleanse us from every impurity that we'll be without spot, without wrinkle or any such thing. What is that? Any such thing. Those are those things that you and I clearly overlook, but he doesn't. He doesn't. Amen. It's easy to see a spot. It's easy to see a wrinkle, but those such things, those are not so easy to see, especially for others, right? But you know they're there. And then there's those things that you don't know are there, that everyone sees in you, but you don't see them. Well, how many know Jesus doesn't miss a thing? Amen. He sees it all. The things you don't see and the things others do see, both alike. He sees them. Amen. And how many know they got to go? Amen. Exodus chapter 29, we begin our study in verse 20. It's very important for God's people to understand the foundation that they are to be standing on, that they are to be putting their trust in. Amen. Exodus chapter 29, verse 20. Then shalt thou kill the ram and take of his blood and put it upon the tip of the right ear of Aaron and upon the tip of the right ear of his sons and upon the thumb of their right hand and upon the great toe of their right foot. and sprinkle the blood upon the altar round about. And thou shalt take of the blood that is upon the altar and of the anointing oil and sprinkle it upon Aaron and upon his garments and upon his sons and upon the garments of his sons with him. And he shall be hollowed and his garments and his sons and his sons' garments with him. How many know the Lord's got some sons? Amen. Praise the Lord. Did you notice in this verse we're looking at, it says the blood must be applied first, then the oil. That's very important to understand. Very important to understand, folks. In this place, we see the blood placed first. And then we look at Leviticus, or excuse me, in this verse, we see the blood, the anointing oil being placed first. In, in Leviticus chapter 8, and verse 30. So it would seem that there's a contradicting con- contradiction here, but there's no contradiction in God's word. Listen, it says, And Moses took of the anointing oil and of the blood which was upon the altar 
and sprinkled it upon Aaron and upon his garments, and upon his sons and upon his sons' garments with him, and sanctified Aaron in his garments and his sons in his sons' garments with him. That's what we just read in uh, Exodus. Now we're looking at the same thing being mentioned in Leviticus. Now take a look at the next verse. Leviticus 14, 17 says, And of the rest of the oil that is his in his hand shall the priest put upon the tip of the right ear of him that is to be cleansed, and upon the thumb of his right hand and upon the great toe of his right foot, upon the blood of the trespass offering. Now, Do you see the blood comes first? That the oil is placed upon the blood, upon the trespass offering, the blood. That's very important to understand, folks, because we're living in a time when folks are getting filled with the Spirit without the blood. Are you listening? so important to understand this. If you're receiving a spirit and you have not been saved by the blood of Jesus, you haven't been cleansed by the blood of Jesus, by faith through through grace, or through faith by grace, if you have not experienced the blood of Jesus Christ to cleanse your sin, then the spirit you're receiving is not the Holy Spirit. Very important. We're living in a time when folks are getting anointed and filled with the spirit, but there's no evidence of the blood of Jesus in their lives. Are you listening? There's no repentance. There's no mention of their and you listen to their testimonies. A lot of these ministers today, there's no mention of the cross. There's no mention of the blood of Jesus. And it's all about the charisma. It's all about the charismatic gifts because the charismatic renewal came out of the Catholic Church. How many know the Catholic Church does not teach that you must be saved by being washed in the blood of Jesus? There's no mention of it in the Catholic Church because the Catholic Church is all about works. It's not about grace. It's not about a gift of salvation. In the Catholic Church, it's about works. Are you listening? Salvation through works. That's what a cult is. A cult is always based on works. But God's salvation is not based on works. It's based upon his grace. It's a gift. That doesn't mean there aren't works, but the works come after you're saved, not before. Are you listening? To be saved, you must believe, first and foremost. And because you believe, you'll do something. You'll repent, right? But you got to start with believing. And you're not believing in something you got to work for. You're believing God for the free gift of atonement, the free gift of salvation. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we could spend some time here because there's such a need in this hour to understand how serious a matter it is. It's just so serious because so many today so many are not washed in the blood. They have no testimony of true blood-washed salvation. Are you listening? Hebrews, Hebrews chapter, chapter 9 and verse 1 
<clears throat> and then verily the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service and a worldly sanctuary. For there was a tabernacle made, the first wherein was the candlestick and the table and the showbread, which is called the sanctuary. And after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, which had the golden censer and the Ark of the Covenant overlaid round about with gold. Wherein was the golden pot that had manna and Aaron's rod that budded and the tables of the covenant. And over the Ark of the Covenant were the cherubims of glory overshadowing the mercy seat of which we cannot now speak particularly. Now when these things were thus ordained, the priests went always into the first tabernacle accomplishing the service of God. But into the second went the high priest alone once every year, not without blood. Did you hear that? Not without blood. That's why, <clears throat> that's why uh, Uzziah got so messed up. Thought he could go in to serve as the priest, and he was the king. Are you listening? The high priest would offer for himself the blood, and for the heirs of the people. The Holy Ghost, this signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest, while as the first tabernacle was yet standing, <clears throat> which was a figure for the time then present in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience, which stood only in meats and drinks and divers washings and carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation. But Christ, being come a high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this body, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Now, I'm not sure why the writer of this book did not say that this was the Holy of Holies. There's a difference between the Holy Place and the Holy of Holies, as already mentioned in this chapter. So don't be confused. Jesus didn't just go into the Holy Place. He went into the Holy of Holies, right into the very throne where the Father is. Are you listening? For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Now this is what Jesus was referring to when he told Mary to, not to touch him, he said, I've not yet ascended to the Father. Are you listening? Don't touch me, Mary. I've not yet ascended to the Father. Jesus was going to enter in to the Holy of Holies in heaven to present himself the Lamb of God his life 
That's his blood. The life's in the blood. His life on the mercy seat, that's the blood of Jesus. I may know that. In the Old Testament, one drop of blood once a year on the mercy seat satisfied God. One drop of blood, folks. Are you listening? Jesus Christ, when he sat down on the throne after he had left Mary, Magdalene, it was finished. Are you listening? You say, well, wait a minute. Jesus said on the cross it was finished. Yes, it was finished. But he still had to do it. How many know that? He still had to take the, as the high priest, he had to go into the Holy of Holies with the blood. What was finished at the cross? The sacrifice. The shedding of the blood. But the the priest, the high priest, would take that blood from the altar and he would bring it into the Holy of Holies once a year. Are you listening? And it was that same blood that was sprinkled upon the high priest and upon his sons. Isn't it interesting? The Bible says that Jesus, when he returns, it says his garments. Anybody ever read it in the book of Revelation? That is, garments are soaked in blood. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, fulfilling the Old Testament scriptures, Jesus Christ, the great high priest, he shed his own blood and then took that blood and brought it into the Holy of Holies, the real Holy of Holies in heaven. Are you listening? And that blood, which he is, he's the blood. It's his, he's the life. He, his blood cries out greater things than Abel. Are you listening? And why did God have mercy on Cain? Without question, it was because Abel's blood cried out for mercy for his brother. And here the blood of Jesus Christ cries out greater things for you and I. Are you listening? He maketh intercession. His blood maketh intercession for us continually. Are you listening? You come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain mercy, and Jesus Christ, his blood is crying out for mercy for you. The very blood that he shed. Are you listening? At the cross. Now, just as the high priest would take that blood from the altar and he would take one drop and it would be placed upon the right ear, the big thumb or the thumb, not the big thumb. <laughs> well, with the, with the, dear God, with the, uh, Philistines, I guess they did have more than one thumb, didn't they? But <clears throat> so the blood was placed upon the the thumb, upon the right ear, and upon the the large toe, and the blood was sprinkled upon the garments of the sons and the high priest, and the oil was also placed upon the blood. This has to do with the anointing. This has to do with the Holy Ghost. Are you listening, people? How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? If if the blood of a spotless lamb and the the blood of goats, bullocks, was able to bring mercy to the people in the Old Testament. How much more does the blood of Jesus Christ cleanse us? How much more? Because every year they had to do that again and again, every year. 
But Jesus entered in once and for all. Are you listening, people? Our salvation is based upon the blood of Jesus. How did they overcome the dragon, the overcomers? Does it say they overcame by the spirit? Does it say they overcame by the water? Does it does it say that? No, it says they overcame by the blood of the lamb first. Then the word of their testimony, which is the word of God and the spirit. Are you listening? First the blood. First the blood. Amen. The true saints of God, the true believer, many hems have been written about the blood of Jesus and the cross. But this generation, the charismatics especially, there's no mention about the blood. If there is, it's very it's very uh, shallow of their understanding. Amen. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, it says they were, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of a testator. For a testament is of no force after men are dead. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. Or excuse me, not no force. Let's read that again. For a testament is of force, not no force. It is of force after men are dead. That's when a will becomes good. It's after a person has died that has left the will. God's will was no good to us until Jesus Christ died. So just shedding his blood wasn't enough. He had to die to make the will good. So not only do we receive the atonement, we don't, not only do we receive his blood for remission of sins, but that positions us, that places us to receive the inheritance, the will of God, that he has left, the inheritance he has left to us through the will of God. Amen? Jesus received an inheritance, a kingdom, that was appointed unto him. And through his death, he is appointed to you and I the same kingdom. We become inheritors. Uh, we become uh, co we we not co-equal in the sense of we're equal with God, but we do become heirs and joint heirs with Christ in his kingdom. Are you listening? And that's through the death of Jesus Christ. So you need to understand that it's very important. And, you know, those today that have been saved, but they haven't died to self, they can never pass on the inheritance to, to others. You have to die to self to be able to pass the inheritance, the Holy Ghost, on to others. Amen. Jesus breathed upon the disciples, and they it said, He said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. And it wasn't until uh, 50 days later or so on Pentecost when they received the Holy Ghost. But he had breathed on them several days prior to that. Are you listening? And you see people like Benny Hinn blowing on people. That's not the Holy Ghost, folks. Are you listening? That's another spirit. Amen? But when Jesus breathed, the Holy Ghost was in him in fullness. In him dwelt the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So when he breathed on the disciples and said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost, he was doing that because at Pentecost, the Holy Spirit would be poured out. So when Jesus said, receive you the Holy Ghost, they didn't receive at that moment. They probably didn't even understand it. And it wasn't until Jesus said, you go tarry in Jerusalem 
until you have heard from me, until you have been endued with power. But see, he had already said to them days prior, he breathed on them. He said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Anybody listening? Only Jesus can give you the Holy Ghost. Amen. You can't receive the Holy Ghost from anybody else. Now, when a person's filled with the Holy Ghost, you can share your inheritance if you're dead to self. That's why Paul said, death worketh in us, but life in you. There's got to be a death to the self-life. And Jesus showed us how to lay our lives down so we can pass the inheritance on to our spiritual sons to our spiritual children. Are you listening? But Jesus Christ, he was the first one to do it. He showed us how to do it. You get filled with the Holy Ghost, you don't just contain the Holy Ghost and just be selfish and keep the Holy Ghost. No. You you grow up, you develop, you have your own spiritual children and then spiritual sons, but you pass that inheritance on That's what this is all about, folks. You're passing the kingdom on to your seed. Are you listening? Not that you're you're ever the seed as far as the word of God, but you've been born of the seed. You've been born of the incorruptible seed. And just as the scripture says in the book of Genesis, be fruitful and multiply, Jesus Christ is doing just that through his seed. Are you listening? And he reproduces after his kind. And he reproduces through us. It's not us that's doing it. It's the word. The word of God is growing and multiplying. That's what Paul meant when when the scripture says the word of God grew and multiplied. It's got to be germinated by the Holy Ghost. That seed must be germinated. But when Jesus said, and he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Ghost, in him was the fullness. The fullness dwelt in him. Now, could they have received the Holy Ghost at that time? Could, maybe they did. They might have re- received a measure of the Holy Ghost. But they certainly didn't receive what they received at Pentecost. Can you say amen to that? We see a change. In, in Simon Peter, a stark change, a clear distinction. There was something different. He's not the same as he was. But very, very uh, possible that when Jesus breathed on them, said, receive you the Holy Ghost, that he was preparing them. And if they were ready, if they could have understood what he was saying, they could have received at that time. I mean, know that. They could have received uh, refreshing. They could have received um, a taste. And I've often said that this was a foretaste for them. Are you listening? The Bible says when Jesus blessed them as he was going up into heaven, just before he blessed them, it says they were sorrowful. They were sad. And when he, after he blessed them, they returned rejoicing with great joy. So they obviously got a taste. Are you listening? But it wasn't until Pentecost that they were endued with power. Anybody listening? You can be filled with the Holy Spirit and not have power. I mean, know that. Just because you're filled with the Spirit doesn't mean you have power. How many know there's an anointing? Oh, yeah. God anoints. And that's what he did at Pentecost. He anointed them with the Holy Ghost. Amen. So they could continue the work that he had started. Are you listening? Jesus was on the cross and he said, it is finished. He wasn't saying it was all finished. He said that part was finished. The sacrifice had been made. His blood had been shed. But he still had to go into the Holy of Holies. 
Amen? Just like the high priest once a year. I imagine this is a lot for some of you to, to grasp. Whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people, according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book and the people. This is what David was referring to when he said, purge me with hyssop, right? When he was talking about create within me a clean heart, renew within me a right spirit, cleanse me from all sin. He asked the Lord to purge him with hyssop. See, he was referring to the Old Testament scriptures. He was asking God to do in him what was done ceremonially in the Old Testament. Amen? Praise the Lord. And the sprinkled, and he sprinkled both the book and all the people. And he said, This is the blood of the testament which God hath enjoined unto you. Moreover, he sprinkled with the blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And without the shedding of blood is no remission. Did you hear that? Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. So those today that are not being washed in the blood of Jesus, being saved by the blood of Jesus, those that are not being born of the incorruptible seed of the blood of Jesus, the word of God, those that are receiving a spirit, that's not the Holy Ghost. It must be first salvation through the blood. You must first be born again of the incorruptible seed of the blood of Jesus, the word of God. Anybody listening? The Lord is reproducing. The Bible speaks in the Old Testament uh, about the seed, his seed, the seed of the woman, shall crush the head of the serpent, and he shall bruise his heel. Jesus is that seed, right? Well, in the New Testament, we see that the Scripture says, not seeds as of many, but one seed, which is Christ, that we are to receive the blessing of Abraham through that seed. Not seeds, but seed. And that seed is the incorruptible word of God. That is how we're born again. That is how we are washed. That is how we are cleansed. If you're not washed, cleansed, born again by the incorruptible seed of the word of God, that is Christ's DNA, that is the Father's DNA, you'll never be anointed by God. You'll never enter into the priesthood, and you'll never become a king until you're born into the family of God. You must be born again, birthed into the family of God. It's not superficial, brothers and sisters. It's real. Are you listening? Jesus said to Nicodemus, you must be born again, Nicodemus, not just born of your mother. He didn't understand it. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, but that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Are you listening? Praise the Lord. Very few today understand, truly understand what it means to be born again. Oh, I went down to an altar and I accepted Jesus as my... No, that's not how it works. That's not how it works. When you're born of the incorruptible seed of the word of God, you're changed. There's a transformation. You may still, obviously, you're still going to have your ups and downs, right? You're still going to deal with the fallen nature. You're still going to be dealing with temptation. 
because you're still immature. But as you grow and as you develop, you move into sonship. Are you listening? And <clears throat> the Lord has appointed a kingdom, not to the babes, not to the children, but to his sons and his daughters, but to his sons. Are you listening? This is a type, people. This is a type. Praise the Lord. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. Doesn't matter what spirit you receive. First the blood, then the oil. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these. But the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. Aren't you glad for Jesus? Oh, praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. Better, better sacrifices than these. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself. Now to appear in the presence of God. Why? For us. He's making intercession for us. The blood of Jesus Christ cries out greater things than Abel. God had mercy on Cain because Abel was righteous. Just like Stephen, lay not this sin to their charge. That's the blood that cried out. The nature of God in Abel cried out. He loved his brother. I may know that. Abel loved his brother right to the end. He never stopped loving him. In fact, if you understand what happened, Cain actually took Abel by surprise. It wasn't fair, that's for sure. But there was nothing in Abel to hold that against his brother. And so God didn't hold it against Cain. Not in the sense that an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. God could have took the life of Cain, could have took him out right there. But he didn't. Why? Forgiveness. Did Cain receive that forgiveness? Did Judas? Did Judas? Just because the provision's been made, just because Jesus offers his love, just because he calls you friend, does not mean you're saved. Amen. You've got to receive his love because they would not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. Amen. Just because Jesus Christ has offered his love does not mean you're saved. you got to accept his love. Just because he was sacrificed does not mean that you're saved. That's what's being taught today. People are being taught, well, Jesus died on the cross, so we're all saved. No, it's not how it works. you got to receive him. you got to accept him. Anybody listening? mentioned at the beginning of this message, this is your foundation. So you should be paying attention because the storm is here. It's only going to get worse. Amen. And you're not going to be able to be unshakable, unmovable, if you're not secure, if you're not established on the rock, Jesus Christ. On the foundation, Jesus Christ, but on the rock. That he is God. Amen. But into the heavens itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. That's where Jesus is. Nor yet that he should offer himself often, as the high priest entered into the holy place every year, or really the holy of holies, every year with the blood of the spotless lamb, 
Amen? For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. Listen to this. But now, once in the end of the world, hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Now, does he put away the the sin of the whole world? No. No, he doesn't. He puts away the sin of those that ask, that pray, that repent. Are you listening? You have to, you have to ask people. You have to ask to be saved. You got to request, you got to require the blood of Jesus. Anybody listening? This idea today that because Jesus died on the cross, it's just a free-for-all. No. You have got to believe and receive. Amen? You cannot apply the blood of Jesus Christ to your life except by faith and obedience. There's no other way. Amen. Look what happened to Aaron's sons when they offered strange fire. Was was Aaron able to protect them from God's wrath? No. Not anymore. Then you're going to be protected from God's wrath if you don't do right. If you offer strange fire, which so many are doing right now, you're in trouble. And the only reason God doesn't destroy those that are offering the strange fire in this hour is, and by the way, strange fire just being in the flesh, acting like it's the anointing, being under another spirit, being anointed by an antichrist spirit. That's strange fire. Being in the flesh, being carnal, and trying to minister to people. Strange fire. When you, when you say there's energy in this place, This place is lively. You call that the Holy Ghost. That's strange fire. Anybody listening? That fire that was used at the, that was on the altar, that fire that was used in the censers that went into the Holy of Holies and the coals and all, that fire came from heaven. Are you listening? You cannot go in disobedience and in the flesh and offer yourself as a sacrifice to God. Can't do it. It's impossible. You're offering strange fire. The fire has to come from heaven. That's why Paul said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, to present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And if God is pleased with the sacrifice, the fire will fall. Jesus baptizes with the Holy Ghost and with fire. But the sacrifice has to be ready, has to be prepared. How many know that? God's not just going to consume and receive the sacrifice that's not been prepared, inwardly and outwardly. You look in the Old Testament, you see what the sacrifice had to go through. There was, there was things they had, they had to wash. There was a washing. The sacrifice had to be washed before it, could have, before it could be offered on the altar. And there's a lot of people today trying to offer themselves to God without being washed by the water of the word. They've never been born again. They're not washed. And then there are those that are saved that it's been a long time since they've been washed. And they're walking in the flesh and they're trying to offer themselves to God. God's not going to offer a sacrifice that is not acceptable, holy and acceptable. It has to be washed. It has to be prepared. It has to be purged. It has to be cleansed. Amen? And then, 
then the fire consumes the sacrifice. Anybody listening? Praise the Lord. And the blood of that sacrifice, our life for his life, he gives us his life. There's an exchange that's taking place. And it's not our blood that goes in by the high priest to the Holy of Holies. It's his. What happens to our life? Does he mix it together? Is there a mixing of, of the blood of the, of, the, of the animal that was sacrificed on our behalf? Does he mix that with the blood of the spotless lamb that's offered as Jesus, as a type of Jesus Christ? No. Anybody listening? Our blood must be exchanged with his blood. Our life must be exchanged with his life. That's the sacrifice that God accepts. He doesn't accept our life. Not as far as making atonement. He accepts our life to be consumed, to be destroyed. No flesh is going to glory in God's presence. I'm seeing it today. I see so many people today trying to offer themselves up as a priest. They're not even in a place to receive, uh, to, to offer uh, spiritual sacrifices. They're not even a place to offer themselves to God. They're offering strange fire. Amen, folks. But Jesus Christ offered himself without spot to God. He was tempted in all points yet without sin. So when he offered himself to God, The perfect sacrifice. Amen. You and I stop at the cross. That's where we stop. And then we leave the cross with his life. That's why Paul says, I'm crucified with Christ. We, you and I stop at the altar. We stop there. We don't go any further. Amen. That's why it wasn't the priests. It wasn't his sons. They could go as far as the holy place. They could not go into the Holy of Holies. Only Jesus could go into the Holy of Holies. But now, through his blood, through his sacrifice, now we can go boldly where we couldn't have gone before, where Uzziah ended up becoming a leper. Not just in the temple on this earth made with hands, But you and I can go boldly into the throne of grace in heaven and obtain mercy from God. Mercy, people. The mercy of God to be changed. Mm. Praise the Lord. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment, So Christ, so Christ, once, once, never do it again, once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Praise the Lord. See, Jesus went outside the camp, bearing our sin as the sin bearer. Are you listening? He took our sin. He expiated it. He took it. He carried it away. He lifted it, lifted it away, destroyed it, never to be remembered again. Are you listening? That's what Calvary does for us. Not only does Jesus destroy our sin by the blood, by his life. But he also destroys the flesh, the carnal nature, so that we can offer ourselves to God without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. Amen. Praise the Lord. Jesus, the great high priest, teaches us as priests to offer ourselves. 
that we might reign with him. If we suffer with him, he said we shall also reign with him. Are you willing to suffer? Are you willing to offer yourself a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service? Or are you going to seek to save your life and lose it? Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to the Lamb, people. God bless you. Got the power.